Pound for pound, this is one scary animal. At Australia's University of New South Wales, Dr Stephen Rowe has turned a hyenodont skull into a digital testing ground, where he can measure the bite strength of its razor-sharp jaws. Hi, I'm Professor Steve Rowe. I'm a real paleontologist, and you're watching Real Paleontology. And that was a little clip I made for a National Geographic documentary on hyenodon way back in 2009, I think. Since then, we've learned quite a lot more about this awesome predator, and I think it's time for a bit of an update. Now, there are a bunch of YouTube videos out there on hyenodon that cover the basics, like how many species, where they've been found and when. Some are better than others, but you can chase these up easily enough. I will give a bit of background here, but what I really want to do is dive in to unpack the more recent research and maybe dispel a couple of widely held myths and inaccuracies. In a nutshell, hyenodon is often presented as a particularly brutish, dim-witted and unsophisticated beast, less adaptable and somehow almost predestined for extinction, driven by competition with superior, smarter, more modern mammalian carnivores. Me, I'm not so sure about that. First up, we need to point out that Hyenodon has no close relatives among living mammalian predators, today's cats, dogs, bears, civets and such. All of these belong to the order Carnivora. Hyenodon, on the other hand, belongs to the now entirely extinct order, Creodonta. So among Creodonts, the genus Hyenodon was particularly successful, with considerable geographic reach. Fossils have been found in Eurasia, Africa and North America, in deposits ranging from around 42 to perhaps as recently as 15 million years ago. It was diverse in terms of the number of species as well, Around 30 have been described, although in reality, there were probably no more than 20. There was quite an extraordinary range of sizes too. The largest was the Asian Hyenodon gigas. A body mass of 378 kilos has been suggested, and a Google search will give you figures as high as 500 kilograms. But it's important to remember that this species is known mostly from fragments of upper and lower jaw. So at best, these predictions are likely to be a bit sketchy. I strongly suspect that these are overestimates because the animal has a disproportionately large head and teeth for its size. But assuming that these are not too far off the money, this is about how large a 380 kilogram hyenodon would have been compared to an average human being. At the other end of the spectrum, the smallest was hyenodon micron here. Only joking, it wasn't quite that small more like this size, around five kilograms or so. Now, the most complete and best preserved material belongs to the North American hyenodon horridus here. Early estimates put the species at around 90 kilograms or 200 pounds based on tooth measurements. Recent estimates based on more reliable leg bone dimensions suggest that it was less than half this size, weighing in at an average closer to 42 kilograms or 92 pounds, this is pretty comparable to the size of a grey wolf. That's a big predator for sure, but certainly no giant. Nonetheless, it was the apex predator of its day in North America. Given its great geographic and temporal range, it's not surprising that Hyenodon seems to have occupied a range of niches. It's even been suggested by Paffet Al 2016 here that one European species, Hyenodon exiguus may have spent much of its life in the trees. One thing is for sure, all members of this genus were hypercarnivores with a heavy dependence on meat in their diets. And this is plainly evident from even a cursory examination of their teeth. Their back molars were adapted for one job and one job alone, shearing through skin, flesh and other fibrous tissue like sinews and ligaments. In this respect, they are most similar to cats among living species. That said, there is a fundamental difference between the teeth of hyenodon and any carnivoran, felid or otherwise. In carnivorans, only one tooth 
In each jaw is equipped with a specialised meat slicing tooth called the carnassial. Here it is in the grey wolf. Behind the carnassial are more general purpose lower crown teeth adapted to process a wider range of foods, fruits, nuts, insects, etc. But behind the big carnassial of hyenodon, there is nothing. So for sure there's something to the argument that hyenodon was more specialised with less evolutionary space to play in than most carnivorans. For example, a modern grey wolf has a capacity to process a wider range of food types than hyenodon. At times of particular scarcity then, a grey wolf would be able to fall back on a wider range of foodstuffs to get it through. For that matter, most carnivorans have way less specialised dentitions, retaining at least some capacity to effectively process foods other than meat, with the exception of really specialised meat lovers like cats. And this observation applies to creodonts in general. The great majority were true hypercarnivores, but of the 230 or so species of living terrestrial carnivorans, many aren't really carnivorous at all. For example, all bears, excepting the polar bear, get most of their sustenance from plants or insects. The same can be said for members of the raccoon family. And this is clearly reflected in their tooth morphology. Their meat-shearing carnassial blades are tiny, and their jaws are dominated by the very large all-purpose teeth behind them, as you can see in the brown bear and raccoon here. So, it's true that hyenodon was more specialised and probably less adaptable than most carnivorans, but in another very important sense, hyenodon remains far and away the most successful genus of mammalian carnivore to have ever existed. Aside from the extraordinary number of species and its vast geographic range, the simple fact is that no carnivoran genus, living or extinct, can even begin to match hyenodon in terms of longevity. It persisted for at least 35 million years. The record for a carnivoran genus maxes out at around 10 million years, held by an extinct South American member of the raccoon family, Cyanusa here. So for the rest of this episode, rather than trying to determine in which ways hyenodon may have been somehow inferior to its carnivoran counterparts, I want to focus on just what features made it so incredibly successful. Let's start with another look at its meat-sharing teeth. Hyenodon hasn't been tagged with the nickname razor jaws for nothing. Now, tooth enamel is the hardest material in the mammalian body, but it still wears down. Hyenodon had an ingenious solution to this problem. As you can see here, its meat-shearing carnassial teeth actually rotated throughout its life to maintain a razor-sharp edge. In 2024, Jack Zeng and Larissa DeSantis here conducted 3D simulations on a range of cat and hyena species and compared them to five species of hyenodon. Their objective was to determine whether any of them showed adaptations to maintain biting efficiency as the animals grew older and their teeth wore down? The short answer is yes. As hyenodon grew older, their bite efficiency actually increased, whereas the bite efficiency of all species of cat and hyena decreased with age. And on the subject of hyenodon bite performance, let's see what the younger me had to say about it. This is what I concluded based on those computer simulations I did for National Geographic using a CT scan provided by Larry Whitmer from Ohio University. At Australia's University of New South Wales, Dr. Stephen Rowe has turned a hyenodon skull into a digital testing ground where he can measure the bite strength of its razor sharp jaws. When Dr. Rowe crash tested the skull, he found that hyenodon's head and jaw muscles could produce about 270 kilograms of bite force. Now, this bite force estimate was for a specimen of hyenodon horridus, the North American species, which is certainly not the largest. But no matter how you wash it, this is a crazy powerful bite, right up there with some modern day big cats. For its size, it's truly exceptional. Remember, this species only averaged a little over 40 kilograms. It may even give 
my favourite extinct mammalian predator, the marsupial lion, a run for its money in this respect, and the gigantic Asian species of hyenodon would have knocked the ball right out of the park in terms of absolute maximum bite force. How did it achieve this? Pretty simple, really. It had absolutely enormous jaw-closing muscles, and this is pretty obvious just from a cursory comparison of its skull to those of some living carnivores. The jaw reductors are basically confined by the cheekbones, and as you can see here, the space available for the jaw-closing muscles in hyenodon is huge compared to a cat or wolf. So hyenodon was a heck of a big biter, and although it hadn't previously been quantified, I don't think that this comes as a great surprise to anyone. However, an area in which I think the capacities of hyenodon may surprise some people regards its intelligence, the supposed lack of which has been offered as an explanation for its extinction. Basically, it was just too dumb to compete with high IQ carnivorous predators. Now, it is certainly true that hyenodon was no genius, and for sure it had a relatively smaller brain than most, but not all, living carnivorans but it wasn't competing with living carnivorans. There has been a well-documented trend toward increased brain size among carnivorans over geological time. But as shown by Flink and friends here in 2021, hyenodon's relative brain size was also trending up. Another thing to be borne in mind here is that, as I suggested earlier, there has been a general tendency to overestimate the size of hyenodon. If this is correct, then this obviously would result in underestimates of its brain size to body mass ratio. Okay, there is one last bit of specialised kit that makes hyenodon stand out against the rest of the mammalian carnivore crowd. It's bony palate. In hyenodon, this palate extends way further back, beyond the back teeth. So what, you might say? Well, the thing is that for a mammalian carnivore trying to maintain a powerful grip with their jaws, the flexing of its jaw muscles can effectively shut down its windpipe. This is not ideal. The extended bony palate of hyenodon gets rid of this problem, and it means that once hyenodon bit into its prey, it could pretty much hang on and maintain maximum bite force for as long as it liked. Now, I reckon this offers an important clue with respect to its predatory modus operandi. It strongly suggests that hyenodon often, if not routinely, needed to apply a very powerful and sustained bite in order to kill its prey. And the only kill technique that obviously fits the bill here is a sustained suffocating throat bite. This is interesting to me because it's a technique commonly applied by cats in the dispatch of relatively large prey, but rarely, if ever, applied by members of the dog family. Hypercarnivorous canids, like the grey wolf or African hunting dog, wear down their prey with repeated slashing bites. Now, I'll wind up shortly, but before I present my concluding remarks, can I ask you to please like and subscribe to my little channel? It'll be much appreciated. How to finish up? Well, hopefully, I've convinced at least some of you that hyenodon was not just some B-grade second-rate carnivore that hung around wasting echo space until it could finally be occupied by proper, more deserving predators. The many species of hyenodon were all highly specialised and effective hypercarnivores. So why did they go extinct? Personally, I would be wary of any simple one-size-fits-all explanation. There were at least 20 different species and they all went extinct at different times in different places. I suggest that there are at least 20 different explanations. To me, the most amazing thing about hyenodon is how successful it was. Like I said earlier, no mammalian carnivore alive today even comes close. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I certainly enjoyed putting it together. I think my next one will be on another extraordinary mammalian predator. So ciao, and enjoy the rest of your day or night.